First of all, I'd like to make a reflection of something that recently happened. Um, I gave a class to some church people to understand Muslim and Islam. And in doing so, we invited um, a Muslim cleric from a temple in Lank City. Old move, but a good one. And in doing so, this is a guy that got his doctorate uh, of Islam in Egypt. And uh, he's well known throughout the world. And uh, Muslims from all around the world are trying to get him to come to their country to lead a temple in their country. And he looked us right in the eye and he said, I'm not crazy. I'm not leaving this country. I'm not leaving this country. This is still the best country in the world. So understanding that, I had to share that with you this evening as a reflection. So let us pray. Gracious Father God, you know our hearts, you know our minds, and you know our souls, for you made us. And Lord, we are grateful. Having just completed a Thanksgiving, we give you thanks, Father. We are blessed. We are blessed as people. We are blessed as a country. We are blessed that people care and people serve in public office. We are grateful that people give their lives in the capacity that they serve in and around our country, but also in Gloucester Township with firefighters and policemen. We are thankful for them, Lord. Father, we ask your blessing on this conclave. We, are, we would ask that you would allow us as a community to stay together, to not settle for second best, but to strive to be the best. May we not be apathetic, Lord, and may we always seek you first in all that we do. I ask your blessing on the families that are represented here, Lord. Continue to bless their lives, their labor, their family, and their friends. And may we also understand, Lord, that there are a lot of people that are not as well off as we. Open our eyes. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. meeting of the Township Council is being held in accordance with the scheduled meetings of the Township Council, established and adopted by the Township Council, with scheduled designated the time, date, and place of this meeting. Adequate public notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. We're using electronic amplifier recording device in order to obtain an audible and clear record. We request that all those wishing to speak be recognized to state your name and address directly into the microphone. Recording device to be solely utilized by the Township Clerk's Office shall be the official record of the Township Council meeting. Roll call, please. Mr. Hutchinson? Present. Mr. Schmidt? Present. Mr. Seiler? Here. Mrs. Gensack? Here. Mrs. Strada? Here. Mr. Mercado? Present. Mr. Bianchini? Present. Mayor Mayor? Here. Mr. Maffa? Present. Mr. Lechner? Here. Mr. Chief Earl? Here. Mr. Carlmere? Here. Mr. Parse? Here. now have the first public portion. Anyone wish to speak on an, uh, any agenda items only? <coughs> Please raise your hand and come to the microphone. Seeing no hands, we'll close the first public portion bid. Kiwanis Baseball Improvements Site, Kiwanis Baseball Improvements Renovations, Lighting Upgrades and Controls for the Gloucester Township Black Horse Plate Regional School District, Township of Gloucester, Black Horse Pike Regional School District, installation of the Energy Savings Improvement Program. Motion to accept the bids. So moved. Second. Any question? Roll call, please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Abstain. Mr. Sh Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Gentek? Yes. Mrs. Trotto? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Bianchini? Yes. Minutes? Read the reading. Reading and accept the minutes of the regular meeting of November 14, 2012, and executive session November 14, 2012. Motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Gentech? Yes. Mrs. Trotto? Yes. Mr. McConnell? 
Ricardo. I'll abstain from his absence. Mr. Bianchini? Yes. Ordinance second reading. Uh, these ordinances will have the public hearing. Ordinance 0 12 26. Ordinance amending ordinance number 0 0505 25. Township of Gloucester, County of Camden, State of New Jersey, adopting the Lakeland Complex Phase 1, Block 12301 Redevelopment Plan in accordance with NJSA 40A Redevelopment and Housing Law. This ordinance allows the Camden County Improvement Authority to be named redeveloper at the Lakeland Complex Phase 1 program only. Anything to add to that thing? No, it amends the, the uh, redevelopment zone into two phases, phase one and phase two. Uh, Lakeland Complex phase one redevelopment zone uh, will name the Camden County Improvement Authority as the redevelopment entity that deals with the uh, county hospital. Now I have a public hearing on this ordinance. Seeing no hands, we close the public hearing. Motion to adopt. Move. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Seiler? Yes. Mr. Sahel? Mrs. Gintek? Yes. Mrs. Trotto? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Bianchi? Yes. Ordinance 0 12 27. Ordinance amending Ordinance 0 81 5, known as Chapter 51 of the Code of the Township of Gloucester, entitled Fees. This ordinance allows the rental of the rec center to a profit organization and sets the fee at $75 per hour. Now have a public hearing for this ordinance. Seeing no hands, we close the public hearing. Motion to adopt. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Gensack? Yes. Mrs. Strada? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Banking? Yes. Ordinance 0 12 28. Bond ordinance authorizing the rehabilitation and or replacement of existing stormwater drainage pipes located in the township of Gloucester County, Camden, New Jersey, appropriating the sum of $2,155,990, therefore authorizing the issuance of general obligation bonds or bond anticipation notes of the township of Gloucester County, Camden, New Jersey in the aggregate principal amount of up to $2,155,990 making certain determinations and covenants, and authorizing certain related actions in connection with the foregoing. This ordinance allows for the funding of the capital budget for rehabilitation and replacement of existing drainage pipes. Tom, I believe most of this is being funded through the NJEIT? All of this is being funded oh, through. And that gives us about 75% of it at 0% interest. Zero, and then the 25% was less than, uh, less than I now have a public hearing on this ordinance. Seeing no hands, we close the public hearing. Motion to adopt. Second. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Gentek? Yes. Mrs. Strada? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Bianchi? Yes. Ordinance 0 12 29. Bond ordinance authorizing the acquisition of various pieces of capital equipment and the construction and completion of various capital improvements and for the Township of Gloucester County and Camden, New Jersey, appropriated the sum of $5,540,610, therefore authorizing the issuance of general obligation bonds for bond anticipation notes of the Township of Gloucester County and Camden, New Jersey, in the aggregate, aggregate principal amount of up to $5,263,579 making certain determinations and covenants and authorizing certain related actions in connection with the foregoing. This ordinance allows for the funding of the capital budget for various improvements and pieces of capital equipment. We now have an ordinance, uh, we now have a public hearing for this ordinance. Seeing no hands, we close the public hearing. Motion to adopt. Second. Second. <coughs> On the question, roll call please. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Seiler? Yes. Mrs. Gensack? Yes. Mrs. Strada? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Mr. Bianchi? Yes. We now have ordinance of first reading, 0 12 30. An ordinance authorizing long term exemption agreement. Chuck uh, Palumbo, our tax assessor, is here to explain this uh, ordinance. Chuck? 
Uh, just briefly, Council has uh, previously approved the pilot uh, for the Revere Run uh, affordable housing project. And what this does is sort of updates it because of the change in financing. So we are moving from a procedural from uh, the other pilot to a long-term uh, pilot uh, for 30 years. It's pretty much uh, simple. I've reviewed the paperwork that Mr. Carmier submitted, and they are all in order according to what statutes are, so we should be uh, good to go with this project as it is underway. Any questions uh, from Council to Mr. Palumbo? Do I have a motion to uh, approve the board? <coughs>
President, members of council, hope you had a great uh, Thanksgiving, and I do want to uh, thank you for your support for the solar uh, project. This has been something that we have been working on, um, and it has uh, finally culminated in great savings uh, for the taxpayers of uh, uh, Gloucester Township. Um, virtually every school will have, uh, and, and uh, some of our properties will have, solar arrays um, on their rooftops and in some of their fields. Um, this is not only a great example of saving taxpayer money, but also of both the local and the regional school districts working together uh, to achieve the goal of saving taxpayers money. So I thank the Black Horse Bay Regional as well as our local uh, Gloucester Township schools and their boards and administrators for uh, the hard work that they have done over the past couple of years to, to finally uh, bring this to fruition. In that vein as well, um, we have entered into the energy, um, uh, the energy Savings Improvement Program, ESIP is the acronym. That is uh, a joint uh, shared service with the regional school district. And what that will do is allow us to replace lighting and uh, replace boilers, uh, HVAC units, various things that will be able to save us money and we will pay for those improvements through the savings. It is a state uh, program administered through the BPU. Um, I bring that to your attention not only because it's, again, another uh, avenue to save taxpayers money, another joint shared service agreement with uh, our school district, but it also was the first time in the history of New Jersey that this particular uh, ESA program was approved uh, using uh, a school district and a municipality. Uh, so we were first in the state to, uh, to work with our regional school district and to get that approved by the, uh, by the Department of Community Affairs. So I thank everybody for their help in, in that regard. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Of course, we know we have the Blackwood Fire Company's uh, annual parade this Saturday, uh, beginning at 6 p.m. at the uh, Blackwood down the Black Horse Pike. And also our annual tree lighting uh, ceremony will take place on December the 16th at 6.30 p.m. here at uh, Veterans Park. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we do not have any GTE gov access questions, so we'll go to the second public portion. Anyone wish to speak on any subject? Please raise your hand, come to the microphone. Ray? Good evening, Council. Ray Polidoro, Ariel. Uh, first, um, I want to pay a compliment to Council. Um, I was reading the Courier Post uh, this past week, and uh, there are some other municipalities and counties that hold public meetings that are under a little bit of pressure. And that pressure is coming from those that uh, don't believe in beginning our meetings with a prayer. I'm happy that Gloucester Township does, and I hope as this pressure begins to expand out that we don't uh, collapse into that and we continue to have a prayer of all denominations before our meetings. It's very commendable. Thank you. Secondly, um, the Winslow project for our MUA going up to Winslow, up here on the Brooklyn Road, um, the construction is, is moving along. Uh, is there any intention, to the best of knowledge, your knowledge, uh, that they're going to finally repave after all the work is done? on the roads of Ariel that all this construction is going on because it's just absolutely brutal. Yeah, Fair, did yeah. You, I did meet with the uh, CCMUA. Now, you know, it, you mentioned it's our project. It's not our project, right? It's the, the county CCMUA's project. I did meet with the engineer and Andy Crickham, the uh, executive director, to go over all that. Um, they are, they won't repave the entire road if it's not, if it's not <coughs> dug up. They will be paid for the portion that is dug up. So this is a temporary fill that you're seeing on the roads now, because um, they have to let things settle for the portions that are done. But they they, uh, they won't go curb to curb if they didn't dig up the uh, if they did not dig up the, uh, the other side of the road. However, if they did cross the yellow line, uh, the median line, or sometimes the pipes will go down and cross over, then they will do a curb to curb. Is the way that it was explained. The reason I ask is unless you've been to Ariel lately. The past few years, uh, the band-aids are stacking up, and eventually the collision experts and the body works experts in the area are, are doing very well in, the, from the residents of Ariel. I think it's time the county starts fulfilling their responsibility to us and taking care of uh, Ariel Williamstown, Ariel New Brooklyn, and uh, Ariel Clementon Road uh, is beginning to get that way. It might be 
to our advantage if the county would help us out with yeah, that. Ray, I, I have also met with the county regarding, as you probably saw, Sickleville Road has now been completed, so that's been repaid. Uh, they are designing Jarvis Road now. That should start in 2013. Um, there are some drainage issues that may be taken into 14 as well uh, for Jarvis Road. Uh, Ariel Road is on that list. Um, Which Ariel? Uh, Williamstown. Ariel Williamstown Road is, uh, is on that list as well. So Ariel in Brooklyn? Everything that comes in the aerial is called aerial road. <laughs> Reason I say is Sickleville Road, and they did an excellent job on that. It was probably the last of the, of the three major roads back in aerial that needed it. Aerial New Brooklyn is, is brutal. Aerial Williamstown is brutal. Uh, particularly the intersections where they both meet. Uh, the county may want to look into that. Um, last order of business uh, is a of a concern. Um, it's not isolated and it seems to be growing. It seems that folks that have been um, anywhere from one week to two weeks late on their tax bill, as well as uh, those that have been even a day late with their MUA bill, have been receiving a very unattractive letter in the mail with pink lettering, which used to mean uh, something good and, and uh, now is not. Tax sale. I also spoke with someone who just recently moved into their house a few months ago, uh, went to settlement, and did not owe a payment for whatever the period of time deemed fit by the mortgage company, and the first tax bill they got said tax sale. Is this, uh, is this something that the township uh, is aware of? And if so, or if not, why? timeline does not sound quite as accurate as what I'm hearing. Um, I mean, I, I have in my hand one of those tax bills from the MUA, and I can tell you that this particular one uh, was a 24-hour crossing in the mail. So it missed that, that payment. We're only talking about a, a crossing in the mail and went up for tax sale. Again, the other individual I spoke with, 10 days late with their, with their last quarter. Okay, so we've been doing this since 97, but I don't believe that we've been through economic times as we are now. Is there not anything that this township can do, whether it be with the, the Department of Tax Revenue or MUA, uh, to show a little compassion to some of these folks that are very concerned? This number is growing, and there's people that are having very, very tough times, and this is what they're getting in the mail. This is not something that, uh, you know, I mean, folks are hurting right now. Governments are doing well. People are hurting, and this is not something that it's, that's really acceptable. It's something we can do about this, make this right, make this a little more compassionate, because one answer that I got was, well, it goes out automatically. Nothing's automatic. A computer only does what a person programs to do. Can't someone put into programming during very tough economic times a little compassion and not something that tells everyone that on December 18th their house is going up for tax sale because of a 90, $92 MUA bill or a 10-day late on, on property tax. That process is promulgated by the state of New Jersey. Our participation, it, it's all or nothing, our participation in an accelerated sale means that we have to send those notices out. Okay, now given the fact that these also went out during the time of the hurricane and the governor did grant some leniency, did we, did we, 
Was this qualifying for that leniency, and, um, and did we participate in that? There was a local finance notice, uh, I believe it was an executive order of the governor, in which it stated that those municipalities that were not under an accelerated sale had an extension to November 16th for their bills. But it specifically stated in that executive order that those municipalities under an accelerated sale could not extend the due date. Could and not. Again, promulgated by the state. And this is something that we're going to continue to do no matter what the once, economy does? Once you've taken that step to go to an accelerated sale, you stay with an accelerated sale. That's grand to know. I hope that I hear from more people uh, that are receiving these bills. It just doesn't seem like... We did extend, the, the deadline was extended to November 13th because of Veterans Day and because of the weekend, and falling on the weekend. So they had up through the 13th. Of Were these people notified of that? All they got was the pink letter. Those went out after. They went out after. Now, Tom, the, in that period of four weeks, the people can pay this. Absolutely. And, and it goes off of the, the tax sale. I mean, so it's... They can catch up. Um, you know, I, I understand what you're trying to say, Ray. However, you know, there's, there's a lot of companies out there that if you don't pay on time, they're right there the next day asking you or charging you an additional interest rate, whatever it is. So... You know, my heart uh, goes out to everybody who struggles because I've talked to a lot of um, economic folks and, and how, how tough it is for people right now, especially in the real estate market. Um, but we're not doing anything that's against state law. We're not doing anything other than making sure that we, uh, we collect the tax rate. And, and bear in mind, we, we collect, our portion is what, 26%. We're responsible to collect for all the other entities and give them 100% of that money. So they get paid whether we collect it or not. So it's up to us to make sure we collect it. Chuck, you're right. Yeah, that's what I was just going to follow through is the fact that <coughs> what that is is delinquency, whether it be for a quarter or for the entire year. We're so responsible to pay the fire companies, the county, and the schools the money that they're due. So if we don't collect it, we still have to pay it. So if that doesn't happen and we don't have the tax sale, and the tax sale is we don't sell their home, we sell their lien. Somebody buys the lien, the delinquency, and they pay the taxes for them, and then they just have a lien on whatever the percent, Whatever the, the difference is in terms of what we're supposed to collect on 100% of the levy, meaning for the county, for the schools, for the fire districts, the difference has to be made up in the succeeding budget for the, by, by, the, by the local, by the municipality. So whatever we don't collect, you have to put a line item in the next year's budget to budget that. So you're going to feel that in this uh, We would have to raise the tax rate and, and, and the budget for the uncollected taxes. So that's one of the reasons, actually the main reason why we have to do that. We collect so, clo very close to 100% of all the levy. Yeah. So the, the, and actually the, the sewer, I don't think the last quarter of the sewer gets counted in there, which is the, the previous. So, but I think, but that just gives you an idea. I can explain more to you if you need I'll it. I'll get with you on that. And, and again, I'm only, I'm basically looking at the <laughs> Response. And one of these residents was here 33 years, one 17 years, always took care of their taxes. And now, for the first time, they're getting that. And there's quite a few people that on December 18th are under the impression that their house is going up. On, that, listen, under the impression that their house is going up <coughs> for tax sale. This just looks a little insensitive and looks like it lacks compassion. At a, at a very, very tough time. And keep in mind, some of these folks were cleaning up after a hurricane when they received these. Image, uh, maybe we can improve on that somehow, but there's a lot more people than you know of. And, and I hope very much to be in touch with them. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Anyone else? You know, their hands are opposed to second public portion. Holding of directors and council, please. Mr. Nothing to report at this time. Mr. Lechner? Nothing to report, thank you. Chief Earl? <coughs> Just a brief uh, comment. Good evening, Mr. President, good evening, Council. As you know, the news is reporting just a very slight chance of some snow this evening, and I think the likelihood of some accumulating snow here is very unlikely. But um, earlier today, the police department, we issued a media release about our ability and being prepared for a snowstorm and that ability of having now 13 all-wheel drive police vehicles. Uh, we did not have in 2010 
uh, when we were struck with storms that were a foot, almost two feet of snow. And we were able to issue that press release on behalf of, uh, because of which uh, council and the mayor and Mr. Cardis have done in your support of purchasing those vehicles last year. So on behalf of the Gloucester Township Police Department, I wanted to thank you for having us and being able to be prepared this winter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Carlin? Uh, nothing. again for coming out this evening. Thank you for staying and hopefully you had a nice Thanksgiving. Mr. Yes. <clears throat> a week ago the mayor, councilwoman Intech, and I we attended a dedication ceremony for the Solemn Wesley Church. This is a historic one of the historical churches in the township. And they have a group of people now that are going to reopen that church. It has been sitting out for a few years and I think that is a great move on their part and uh, township should support them as much as possible. I think they're going to do a, do a good job from what we can see. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out today. Mrs. Strada. Thank you everyone for coming out. Mr. Mercado. I want to thank everyone for coming out. Uh, some of my comments are dated. I wasn't here at the last meeting, but uh, I want to talk about briefly about uh, Superstorm Sandy and uh, the response from our mayor, police chief, and director of public works. Uh, I received a lot of comments uh, the week of the storm and the week after the storm about how our residents were informed. They received numerous phone calls at our homes, numerous phone calls from the mayor uh, on my answer machine, uh, but you kept us informed, aware of what was, t of what was happening in our township. Um, and I think that was very comforting to our residents and to myself as well, even though I'm in constant contact with the administration here. Those who are not uh, were comforted by seeing uh, and hearing from our mayor, our police chief, and our director of public works. And kudos to your departments for keeping our streets clean and clearing up our sidewalks. So thank you. Uh, congratulations to freeholder-elect, uh, Ms. Ms. Gentech. Congratulations. Uh, we're going to miss you on Mondays, but um, you're going to be around. I know that. <laughs> so, but congratulations. Uh, and also, I want to thank the Bethel Christian Center. On November 18th, they hosted, I think this is about the sixth or seventh year, they've hosted a township-wide Thanksgiving dinner free. The residents of our township, and there are a lot of folks that are out of our township that attended that uh, dinner on the 18th, and some of my colleagues, including the mayor, were serving dinner on, on that day. Uh, they pay for this out of their own pockets. It's donations from their, their, uh, their, their church community uh, and other vendors. Uh, and they provide this service free from 1 o'clock to 6 o'clock, serving our community. So, um, Council President and Mayor, if we could possibly have them come in at our last meeting in December uh, and, and recognize them for the work that they've done. They've been doing this um, and without any type of fanfare. They just do it. So, thank you. Um, and a happy anniversary, uh, Mr. President. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. Yeah, thank you to, uh, for all the residents for attending tonight's meeting. Uh, I, too, was at the uh, Bethel Christian uh, Thanksgiving dinner, uh, and I believe they cooked about 158 turkeys that day. And uh, for about an hour and a half, I, I stayed in line uh, with uh, uh, Councilwoman, um, uh, oh, jeez, <laughs> <Friday. laughs> and uh, it's tough when you get married and it's your first anniversary and you're here. <laughs> And uh, Councilman Mercado and, and Kevin Butteroni was there from the school board, and uh, Frankie Schmidt, and Michelle, and Assemblywoman um, Mascaro was there, and so it was just a, a, a great time. It's just great that they reach out to the community and um, give uh, give back to the community. As Orlando stated, they do it free of cost, and there was a lot of turkey going out of there and a lot of stuffing and potatoes and all that stuff, so it was a wonderful, uh, wonderful event, and I enjoy doing it every year, um, so it was good. So with that, I ask uh, for a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Thank you, good night. Sorry, thanks. Yeah.